In 2019, we were lucky enough to be able to spend some time with the folks from New Wave Toys at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo and check out all their different stuff that they had there at the show. It was one of the last shows we got to attend before COVID hit. And since then, we've been lucky enough to be able to test out their Dragon's Lair arcade cabinet. And if you haven't checked out our video on this one here yet, I will have it linked for you right up there. But this thing, it looks great, it plays great. It really is a scaled down version of the original arcade cabinet. But since this came out, the folks at New Wave Toys have not been sitting still. They have been busy working on new and better cabinets even still, and this, is absolutely brilliant. Hey everybody, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Welcome to our first video from our new studio. As you can see, there's no TV behind me yet, nothing on the walls, things are a little bit bare, but we are getting there. So I want to know from you down in the comment section, have you ever purchased an arcade cabinet such as this here, either six scale, half scale, or full scale? And if you haven't, what's the one cabinet that you don't own even if you do have one that you wish that you had. For me, I am jealous of my buddy Russ Lyman who got himself a Play Choice 10 within the last few months. Absolutely wonderful machine I have always wanted. And now I'm starting to sweat because <laughs> this thing is heavy, so I had to take my hoodie off. Were you breaking out the muscles? Russell, we need your muscles. Time to break out the gun show. Watch the, watch the top. APB, it is an arcade game that nobody ever talks about. I had so much play, fun playing it at Sammy's Burger Place, but really for me, the one that I have always, always wanted since I was four years old is the Star Wars arcade cabinet. And I know there are repros out, I want an original. Speaking of reproductions, the folks again with New Wave Toys has sent us their latest replicate, and it is the 1942X stand-up one six scale cabinet. It's gonna be very similar in size to what we have here with the Dragon's Layer cabinet, but it's fully licensed by Capcom, and it again has the 1942 game running on it. So what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna unbox this, we're gonna check it out, we're gonna play a little bit as well. So here we have the 1942 Xbox in the photo booth. One thing I do wanna say, first of all, thank you to New Wave Toys for sending us this for review now. They did send us this at no cost, but they're not reviewing any content before this goes live, and all of my the opinions that you're hearing here are my own. So dimensions here, 10.4 inches high by four and a half inches wide by five and a half inches deep. Kind of a nondescript box, quite honestly, and I like it and I don't. Um, what I like about it is this is, like if this was getting delivered to an arcade, this is what it would look like. Um, it is kind of plain, but that's okay because if it's anything like the uh, Dragon's Lair box, there'll be a much prettier one just inside. And as you can see, it did actually get dinged up a little bit in shipment, so we shall check and see. Oh man, look at that! Look how beautiful that is. We'll pop this out. And one thing I do wanna just check that back corner. No, it did not get dinged up in transit. So uh, nice shrink wrap and everything on it. Beautiful artwork, uh, 1942 and 1943 ROM on here. It looks, plays and controls like the original. Uh, you know, great artwork on the side. This is the side of the, um, the, the unit itself is basically what it looks like right there. Illuminated marquee and accent, HDTV and USB connectivity, and it is officially licensed by K. Capcom uh, features. Let's give you a closer look here. So it features a replica 1942 Romstar Capcom Lowboy arcade machine in one six scale. Plays the original 42, 1942 and 1943, the Battle of Midway arcade games. Arcade operators menu featuring customizable dip switches and cabinet settings. That's cool. Miniaturized control panel featuring mini joystick and arcade buttons includes bonus 1943 mini arcade stick for two player gameplay. Also works with some USB compatible modern console controllers, plug and play for HDMI output, uh, authentic wood cabinet construction, illuminated marquee. That is something that the marquees on these look great. We'll show you that in a moment. Signature amplified multi-speaker audio reproduction with volume control, high resolution cabinet art reproduction on quality three 
M vinyl overlays, high score saving with non-volatile memory, built-in high capacity rechargeable battery, premium LCD display with a 3 by 4 aspect ratio, the theatrical orienta or vertical orientation, officially licensed again by Capcom, limited edition, 100 day new wave toy. Uh, factory warranty, accessories, 1943 mini arcade stick, top secret sticker, replica, owner's manual, micro USB charge cables, and a middle metal arcade token. So with that, we are going to open this guy up. And we'll just grab our handy dandy box cutter here. Now, normally I would use my X-Acto knife, but, uh, and I can't blame this on Tom from Do Your Nerd. Make sure you check those guys out, uh, Tom and Lady Lacey. Uh, I actually have not unboxed my X-Acto knife yet in all my tools. So uh, we will be getting there here in the near future. I am very excited for this. As much as I love the Dragon's Lair one, and I've seen the other just remarkable work that they have done with other cabinets, I cannot wait to check this guy out. So nice thick styrofoam padding in here so you don't have to worry about things getting damaged. Look at the artwork here. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. We have a baggie here with some stuff. We will look through that in a moment. But I want to check this out. We've got some other foam wedgies in here just to make sure that whoop, things don't fall out like that. That's the arcade stick. Um, that's too cool. That is way too stinking cool. And that's basically how it is in the packaging or in the box here. All right, so here we have the cabinet itself, which we will free from the plastic. This is actually shorter than what the Dragon's Lair one was by quite a bit. Um, but I think part of that is based on the original cabinet that this was designed after. And we will oh, pull that off. Yes. I got to say, I love the little details. Like if you look at the coin door here, it's an actual like metal coin door here. And I don't know if that pulls open or not. I'm sure that I'll be able to check that out in the instructions. It looks like the uh, like a coin return slot. Press up uh, to add credits, press down to get into the menu. Okay, so that's a rocker button right there, so that is good to know. Looking here at the controls itself, you have a one player, two player button. You have your arcade authentic joystick right there. You have a fire and a loop button too. So. Overall, you know, very nice looking unit here. Let's turn around. Up top, you have your power button and your volume slider right there. And right below that, you have your twin speakers. And then down below that, you have your USB ports along with your charge port. Now, I will say that it does have um, micro USB for the charging on the back here, which you can kind of see there. I, I do wish that this was USB-C. I'm hoping that they do make that running change in the future. And then this you need to peel off to access your HDMI output on here. Change TV display settings to fit. Uh, so that way you get the best overall display. I don't have any fingernails right now. Come on. And there is the HDMI output on the back. Now there are a pair of USB cables included. They are uh, USB-A to micro USB. The reason for this, one is for power or charging and the other is what the little controller here will utilize. On the back you have, again, a micro USB output on here. I half wish that was hardwired, um, but it's no big deal. This is more of a micro switch than what the built-in unit was. It's definitely very clicky. Uh, clearly, clicky buttons were easy to make on that. It's actually feel really good. Yeah, I like that. I may end up playing using this more than I anticipated. And then finally, looking in our poly bag here, we have an instruction manual. And if you take a look here, these are two stinking cool. You have your top secret instructions and you have tokens as well. That's just mwah, one of those wonderful things that New Wave Toys adds with all of their units. 
and starting out here, you can see kind of a uh, an English explanation of everything going on. Your light up marquee, player one, player two button, uh, joystick. You know, nice call out here with everything going on. Has how to charge, charging tips, how to start a game. Once the 1942 X Replicate cabinet is on, press the add credit button, rocker up to give yourself credits to play the P1. Uh, press the P1 button to start a one-player game or 2 uh, P button to start a two-player game. You have to have two credits to start a two-player game. Makes sense. Use the joystick to fly around, hit the fire button to attack, and hit the loop special button to do special actions to use external controllers and HD TV support. This is one of the things I want to check out. External controllers can be used to play your replicate using the two USB ports on the back of the machine. Visit their website for a list of supported controllers. When both controllers are plugged in, hit start on the P2 controller to start a two player game. Use the P1-2 switch in the menu to play a one player game with an external controller. Do not unplug the controllers from the back during game. And then obviously uh, it walks you through what you need to do for HDMI output. It also has some really nice playing tips and whatnot to help you play in 1942 and 1943. Walks you through how to navigate the menu, uh, some caution, warranty information, and then from there goes to Spanish. So now before we start gameplay, one of the things I do want to do real quick is I do want to just compare it side by side with the Dragon's Lair cabinet for size comparison. So you can see the Dragon's Lair is a little bit taller than what the 1942 cabinet is. Uh, the display also a little bit taller than what Dragon's Lair is. This is more of a widescreen versus this is very authentic to the arcade shmup type setup where it is a three by four type display. So. Uh, interesting to see the differences in size. So I've gone ahead and I've turned off the lights on top just so you can get a better look of everything as it powers up. Now, one thing we do have to do is go into the menu so we can set a few things up here. Now, from the time you push the power button into when it actually does something, it is a little bit of a long boot up process. I'd say uh, it was about 15 to 20 seconds before the marquee came up and before the display came up. Now to access the onboard menu, what you do is down below here as you press down and now you can see all the menu items and you can choose the game either 1942 or 43, change the difficulty, you can change the marquee light there the marquee is off, marquee's on, so you can turn that on or off to uh, change or extend your battery life. Change the backlight, and I bring it up a little bit here. P1, P2 switch, press any action button on. Replicate scan lines, so you can turn scan lines on and off. Starting lives, bonus lift, and then you can see at the very bottom here, it actually has a battery indicator. So uh, we're going to go into 1942 first. We'll insert a coin. This thing is loud. Holy cow, I'm going to turn it down. Oh, this is great. Now it does not have rapid fire and I am just, oh, and I am just using the little analog on the joystick here. So, and again, the whole thing is so that you can actually see without me having my grubby paws in the way. Buttons are very responsive, I'm digging it. Now, they did something similar to this with the, the external controller on Street Fighter 2, I wanna say. Man, the audio just, it's spot on. Ah, oh, did I get it, yes! Oh, come on. Yeah, this is actually playing great. And, you know, this is one of those two that, ooh, I didn't see him coming. So I'll play a little bit more here. Oh, as I fly into another one. All right, gives me 43 that I shot down, my percentage 78. So pretty accurate. Today's top, 30%. So I'm going to hit the down arrow and we're going to go game selection. We're going to change to 1943. And there you can see it changed the game. We're going to add our coin. 
press start. Now holding down the button does slowly fire for you. Um, it's not a rapid fire. Ooh. Oh, this is the version that has the the upgrades and whatnot. I like that. Look at the shadows on the cloud too when I was over there. That was pretty cool too. This is definitely one of the classic shmups that are out there. Got him. I played so much of this at Sammy's Burger Place. I'm not going to lie. I think Ed Brust was one of the guys that we went to scouts with and he uh, used to work there as well. And he was always playing this too. Now, if I had my TV set up down here, I'd actually get some capture footage and uh, hook this up to the TV. But for right now, this is actually ideal for me because I don't have my TV hooked up. Oh man, this is great. Um, yeah, the, the analog stick on the external controller is great. So one of the things you have to do is you actually have to disconnect the external controller to be able to play using this. I have to admit, I probably prefer the feel of this joystick better, but I am also not a huge fan of micro switches. I will say, oh, I do like the way the buttons feel on the controller better than uh, the built-in one a little bit. And I think it's just, it has a, a more positive feel and lock. So I like the controller better on this than the joystick, but I like the joystick buttons better. I think it plays great. I think it looks great. I think it plays authentic. Uh, and I think the details, they absolutely nailed. I love the external controller. I think this is really, really good. I like the buttons on here actually better than the ones that are built into the cabinet, but I'm not as big of a fan of the micro switch joystick as the joystick built into it. Um, I thought the ROM played great. It sounded great. It's loud too. That's the other thing. It is really loud. And the overall look and finish, I mean, this is a beautiful piece of art. Look at that graphic. That is something straight out of the 80s. Same with there. Um, now, it doesn't have some of the extra things that like the Dragon's Lair cabinet had because the real one didn't have the laser disc player and all that stuff but overall this is a fun conversation piece something that is just it's fun that's at the end of the day that's what it's supposed to be is it's simply fun and i'm glad to have this in my collection well i will say there are a lot of surprises here some good and some great um, first and foremost i thought that there were going to be a lot of similarities in the cabinet itself between dragon's lair and 1942. i couldn't have been more wrong the cabinets are completely unique to themselves, which I think just takes the just takes the whole package to the next level. See, it's one of those things where if they were taking the same cabinet essentially and just putting a different label on the side and a different ROM in it, it would kind of be meh. I mean, there are some companies out there that are doing that and it works and people love them. But for me, I love the fact that you will never confuse the Dragon's Lair cabinet for the 1942X cabinet. They are physically different, which is terrific. I love the fact that once again, it is an arcade accurate ROM that has been loaded into here. The sound is booming. And the fact that while I didn't show it here, you can use it with an HDMI output to be able to connect to a TV and get an even bigger display is great as well. Now I will say that depending on the size of your display, your results may vary. I know on a larger TV, it tends to blow it out. Uh, it's not designed to be played on a 70 inch flat panel TV. It's just not. Uh, but it's one of those things that as it is on here, it's terrific. And this was my first experience playing with, you know, the little external controller like this outside of their Super Street Fighter cabinet. And this is terrific. I will be testing additional controllers down, uh, down the road with like stuff from Retrobit and even Retro Fighters. Like we have the wireless Brawler 64 USB sitting right there. I am wondering if that's gonna work with this. Stay tuned, we will be testing it out when we do our review on that. The display is gorgeous. It's easy to go ahead, sit down, play, have some silly fun for a while, and then move on to something else. It's one of those things that, you know, you're not going to sit down and invest hours upon hours in these, which is a good thing and a bad thing. This is the perfect thing for a casual gamer who just wants to go ahead, get their shmup fix, 
get in, get out, and move on to something else. But there's enough here that if you want to sit and play for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, you can do so and not be worried about straining your eyes or, or having an overall bad experience. I did like the buttons better on the separate controller than built into the cabinet, but I like the joystick built into the cabinet better than the micro switch here. Different strokes for different folks, I'm sure. But overall, the fit, the finish, the construction, the overall performance of this, this is outstanding. And if you are a fan of 1942 or 1943, this is something I highly recommend that you check out. I will have a link down below in a pinned post where you can pick these up straight through New Wave Toys. Again, thanks to them for sending us one of these for review. And if you want a really cool accessory to go with these two, they have these awesome mats that look straight out of the roller rinks from the 80s that you could have that you would sit this on. They also have the change machines that are actually power banks too. Pretty stinking cool. Now, if you do have any other questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. You can also go ahead and email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Send me a message on Twitter at rocksolidstudios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. And as I mentioned at the top of this video, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. We have a lot of work to do on this blank canvas back behind me you want to stay tuned to see everything that we have coming up here on the channel. And good luck also to good friend of the channel, RGT85, Sean Long, who is also going through with a move. He also just bought a new house recently. Congratulations, Sean. All the best, my friend. Hope that your move goes oh, smoother than this one has. Uh, now, if you are looking for more modern and retro gaming accessories, like say USB controllers, if you're looking for the Retro Fighters wireless USB Brawler 64, do me a favor, head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. He has accessories for modern and retro games available on the site. And the cool thing is everything that you purchase on there, you earn what's called Castle Cash. It's this rewards program where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases and Castle Cash is just like cash. Plus, you can use promo code ROCKSOD10 to save 10% off of most items on the website, including items from Retro Fighters. This is cool. This is fun. And I am just, it's kind of neat that this is the first thing that we're reviewing here in our new studios. We're excited to bring you a whole lot more. And if you want to see some of the things that we've done in the past, like our review of the Dragon's Lair cabinet, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rocksaw Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksaw. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.